All right, today is the day, and we are taking another look at laminating in the tub and some other odds and ends. Got sitting here beside me some parts. If you have any idea what you think these might be used for in the building of a supercar, put that in the comments. I'll give you a hint later on in this video as well. We're going to be getting some steel, an order of steel in, and send that off to the water jet cutters. And then we're going to be moving into some things that might be a little more interesting rather than just seeing lamination all the time. But anyway, that's what the focus of this video is, so let's go take a look at it. So one of the side projects I've been working on is uh, creating all these little test samples to add to my FRP video series on fiberglass reinforced plastics. Um, these are little three by six samples um, made up of layers of different weights of cloth. Going to be testing those by putting them in a machine and showing the deflection and what you get by adding strength materials or just adding heavier cloths. Anyway, laminate these pieces up and uh, cut them to size. Label them all. Right now I've got about 40 of these samples, so it can be pretty extensive. If you remember back when this video, I had a little sample that I created of the laminations here in the tub and I needed it to be a little bit stronger. So going ahead and adding two more layers before we add in our core. This is a, a nine ounce cloth. We're just going and put some resin down over the old layers. Again, I'll be laminating that into place. Now it's interesting, once you have a few layers of fiberglass in, it's much easier to use larger pieces. They will shift around and move with your resin flow. Just going and working these larger sheets around into the corners up against the flanges getting the resin impregnated into that material. I said this, uh, this will bring me to a total of uh, six layers on the first. Of course, those first layers were real fine satin weave fabrics to keep print through from occurring. So they didn't add much into the strength of this structure. But this is going to bring me up to what I believe is a good compromise for that first layer. Saying first layer because that's a, those six layers equaling the first layer between this core. And then if you remember, I had cut that uh, Nomex out in the last video. Here it is, laying it in on top of those newly impregnated layers of fabric. I'm going to weight it down with sandbags. I still don't have the ability to use a vacuum bag to pull this into shape because uh, I need to have the area free so I can laminate right up against those flanges. The only place to adhere the sandbag would be those flanges and I can't laminate against it if there's a bag in there. So I'm going to weight it down, let it cure. Now it's cured. You don't need to see me take the sandbags off, so we're just going to get rid of those, get them out of our way. And here it is, Nomex core bonded to the those last two layers. Now I'm, I forgot to put some uh, of these bolts. These are elevator bolts. And you'll see that I have a door hinge that's going to go in here. And that uh, Nomex honeycomb is actually in my way. I should have cut it further back. Didn't realize that till later, so I'm going to go here now and uh, remove a little bit of that material in that Nomex so that we can get those uh, elevator bolts in there. I use those elevator bolts because they've got such a wide flange. Just bonding them to the surface is uh, enough to hold some pretty good strength. Once I've got the Nomex cut away, I need to go back and regrind that 45 degree bevel. You notice I got a piece of paper there to keep the dust off, but kind of a useless mess so I end up just pulling it out of the way it seemed to be working pretty good so I went back and uh reworked the whole thing get a nice little smooth edge on there now you see those uh 
I've got two bolts that are going to be required for this door hinge and so I just cut a little piece of metal, drill some holes for the right spacing, put those on there and then drop those bolts in. After they've cured and bonded to the surface, I need to do some laminations to uh, hold them in place and I usually do this by cutting the little round discs of larger and larger sizes. Right now we're going to put three of those discs on. Like I said, each disc is slightly larger so that it bonds to the surface below. There will be more layers that go across it to hold that thing in place. Three of these little discs now, and then we're going to put, when we put our, uh, our layers on top of that Nomex honeycomb, that will also cover those bolts and add a couple more layers. Now narrating these videos, sometimes I have to sit back and watch all the tedium that I've tried to edit out. But just to get the idea of what it takes to put one of these things together. You might notice the bolts kind of look black now. I also take a little uh, sculpting wax, soft wax, and uh, rub that into all the threads. That way when you get any resin on the bolt, it's not going to be a matter of having to run a thread cleaner across those things. Just a matter of getting the wax off there with some solvent. And they'll be clean, ready to go. Here's what it looks like. This is after the honeycomb and the layers put on top of it. They're bonded in place, ready to go. Now here in this place, I've got this uh, channel, this window pillar that's got a deep groove down in here. And I need to add a lot of strength in there. So what we're going to do is add some long single strand filament or fiberglass toe, straight toe, no, no weave in it at all. This just comes on a roll. I've cut it to length to come down and then fan out onto the surface of the roof and onto the dashboard. Just kind of press it down into that groove. It is a little bit of a pain because it uh, wants to pull individual strands out with the stickiness of that resin on your brush. But if you just work slow, keep enough resin on your brush so it'll kind of slide along those fibers. Anyway, it takes a while to work this into these. They're pretty heavy fibers. And so get enough resin in there that I can go back and put another layer on. Didn't want to start with too many layers. That way you get the first batch impregnated. Then you can uh, add another batch. And the trick here too is to when it comes down to the flat surface here on the roof and then back onto the dashboard right here where I'm brushing now. You can uh, kind of fan those bristles out and spread them out so they lay flat. And then we'll go ahead and add some fiberglass, some woven fiberglass over the top of it to kind of hold it in place, keep it pressed tight so that the resin stays spread out rather than running down capillary action, running all the way down the hill under the roof. And we will actually go in and put, even after I'm doing this cloth over the top of these fibers, we will go back and uh, put a couple more in. This is going to be a lot of strength needed in these A-pillars. Certainly don't have the roll bar or anything going in here. So this is going to be all the strength to keep our windshield frame in place. I have to kind of do these little pieces of fiber in sections of one long thing just doesn't roll right just doesn't seem to uh fit into that groove so about six inch sections of time is all you can do anyway i think you understand that and then like i said those fibers came up around the corner i didn't show the fiberglassing the ends of that top where it came onto the dash here but we're going to uh Lay some fiberglass cloth on the dash. And if you remember in the last video, I uh, used some Q-cells to thicken up some resin and to fill some of the grooves so we wouldn't have to keep working the fiberglass into those deep grooves. But here we are now working that fiberglass right across that Q-cell fill. Makes it a lot easier to uh, lay the resin down, fiberglass and resin. Here I am squeegeeing it out, getting a little bit of resin out. 
See how smooth that res that gloss. See how smooth the glass goes right across that? Get my tongue tied here. The other thing is fiberglass tapes going to be used extensively throughout this whole build. These are just uh, rolls of cloth that have a selvage edge on both sides. That way they don't become frayed. That's why they call them tapes anyway. Selvage edge or a woven edge on each side. Here a little one half inch tape going around all the flange on the dashboard here to strengthen it up. In fact, the front bulkhead or the footwell will actually be right behind that flange we're working on there. Another thing we need to do is I have some hinges for the engine cover and I've cut a bunch of that tape into these little short two inch pieces and I'm going to create what I need is 10 plies each for these things to reinforce or create the hinge on the engine cover. So they're just laying down on a piece of release laying down 10 plies and I won't make you watch me laminate all 10. So you're gonna jump ahead, squeegee out the excess resin. And once I have these built up to the 10 plies that I need, I'm going to place them on a piece of mylar and a little piece of aluminum to back it up. And then when I put them in place, I can clamp the mylar and aluminum to hold it in place. So here I'm peeling off the 10 plies putting on a little pre-cut piece of mylar and aluminum and they're ready to uh, place on the hinge. Now here you see the flange has been built up. That's the hinge area. And so we're going to put these on each side of that. 10 plies equals just about uh, shy of three sixteenths or about a little less than a quarter of an inch, I'd say. Put those on to each side of that. And you see, I've got one of those uh, binder clips there. And this video is going to jump ahead. And you're not going to see the binder clips on until we I take them off. But they will be clamping that 10 plies between the mylar and the aluminum up against the flange while it cures and bonds to the layers that have been lapped up against the flange already. And boy, there's a miss in my edits. I shouldn't have done that a long time sitting there watching me do nothing, huh? So like I said, these are just shy of a quarter of an inch, I'd say. And once it's laminated in, I will be drilling through those two. And there'll be another piece of uh, resin buildup on the hood side, engine cover. I said binder clips, compress it against the flange, aluminum comes off, mylar pops right off, and there you have it. So right here, the bulkhead is going to run this direction right there. And so these hinge 10 ply pieces will actually also be laminated again right up against the bulkhead. Hinge will go through there, another piece in that direction. Now you remember this uh, blue template. This was what we used to cut out the Nomex in the last video. Now I'm going ahead and cutting out three pieces of fabric. A nine ounce satin weave that'll go right up against the Nomex and then two nine ounce regular bidirectional fiberglass cloth to give us our three layers for the inside second layer. So just go ahead and lay that out trim these pieces. Now, instead of laminating these pieces in place, we're going to actually make kind of a pre-preg. So just going to take these pieces over to another workbench. Lay them onto a piece of polyethylene cloth. Here, this is just a six mil garbage bag. Cut one side of it off. Find something inexpensive to lay this up on because you're just going to throw it away once it gets all goopy with resin. So laying these three layers on in reverse order, putting down the 
bidirectional weave fabrics. Um, ultimately, you want these to be actually slightly larger, just as we did with the bolt inserts, each piece of fabric slightly becoming a little bit larger so that the weave edges don't all end at the same place and create kind of a drop off in your lamination. You want to taper off a little bit. So uh, make each piece of fabric slightly larger, even just by a quarter of an inch is plenty to make that taper off. And once we have all three layers impregnated, bring it over to where we want to drop it, laying it here across the Nomex. This is not like a official uh, factory made prepregs. It's kind of a sticky job, but it is a, uh, good way to do this rather than trying to uh, the problem is is trying to brush on the epoxy over the nomex you tend to push way too much resin into the nomex and then you're going to fill the cells of the nomex rather than keep the weight advantage of it you're being just enough resin to bond to the nomex so kind of have to do this to keep this weight saving advantage of the nomex core Just kind of working around. Now you're going to see that I have to worry about the bolts for those hinges that I'm going to have to work around. Also, since I'm working up against uh, partially cured fabrics already, you've got kind of a rough surface of the weave of those fabrics. And so just the resin that's in that prepreg that I've created is not enough to fill the voids in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of resin on all of the fiberglass surfaces where I'm going to be bonding these two against. Found a little nub sticking out. Get it out of the way. Finish adding a little resin around those surfaces. Go back and flip that uh, prepared back into place and start uh, pushing it against the resin. Same thing, just keep flipping the cloth back on each of the sides, working our way around. Also little air bubbles that may form. They're still, still can work those out with our fingers or the brush, just push them to the side. Or in this case, they work themselves right through into the Nomex, which is kind of an air core anyway, just push the air into the Nomex. I guess I could have edited a little bit more of this out. I think you're probably getting the idea of how this is going to work. Working on these bolts is a matter of uh, taking a razor blade and marking the center of each of the bolts. Hard to get exact center, so I'm going to take a pair of scissors. Mark the bolt with the razor blade, be able to get the tip of the scissors through there. Cut about a quarter of an inch slot and then that'll slip over those bolts. Also have to uh, make a little decision around these tight bends so that it will uh, make the turn without bunching up. A little bit of a job chopping through three layers of uh, sticky resin saturated fiberglass, but it's uh, something you gotta do. Now, foreshadowed here is uh, talking about 
the bolts. Now I'm actually doing the work. Once you get those little slots, able to push those right around those bolts and now you can go back with that brush, stipple it in, press that resin and fiberglass together. Then it's a matter of just going around now that everything's in place where it needs to be. Work it tied into the corners. Work it up against the Nomex edges. And we are just about done. Well done is relevant. We are just about done with the center section of the tub hood. Hood or roof. And as I promised, here's a hint of what those bars are for. What is that gonna be? Well, that was a bit of a rundown of all the intricacies, the little things that go into laminating of this tub to add specific strengthening and reinforcements so that we can keep the weight down by being really specific in the type of material we use and the direction of the fibers are running, things like that. But anyway, if you came across this video and you want to see a little more understanding of what happened in this video, I'm going to go ahead and put up a video right here showing a previous video to this. And then also, if you're new to the project completely, the Arate Supercar Project, I can put a video up here to link it right back to the beginning so you can start there. Anyway, thanks for watching and come back and see us again.